are growing calls in India for measures to curb hate speech on TV news channels. It follows a panelist comments against the Prophet Muhammad of these course offence, sparking protests both within and outside of India. Many believe news channels are worsening com communal tensions in an already pol polarised society. Ershan Garg looks at what is being done to try to resolve this issue. Indian TV news has become a battleground of angry arguments. The news anchor isn't simply the moderator. But is often an equally enthusiastic participant in debates that now dominate Hindi and English news bulletins. Foul language and what's seen as insensitive remarks on minorities are common. And what's on air is causing offence among many, including fellow journalists at the digital initiative Boom Live. What, is, what you see on TV news these days is no longer journalism in any form. The ruling Bharti Janata Party spokesperson Nupur Sharma's inflammatory comments against the Muslim prophet Muhammad during a TV debate caused an uproar in May. Protest erupted in many parts of India. And several nations, mainly in the Gulf region, criticized the BJP, which eventually suspended her. However, the outrage was not solely targeted at the BJP. The English news channel Times Now, which hosted the debate, was also slammed for telecasting such content. We asked Times Now for a comment, but the channel did not respond. But in a tweet posted the day after the incident, Times Now said the offending comments were the BJP spokesperson's personal views and that the outlet does not, quote, endorse views of participants and urges them to maintain restraint on debates. Times Now is not the only one channel being accused of spreading hate. An investigation by the online news outlet News Laundry in June, the month after the controversial remarks were broadcast, found nearly half of popular TV news channel debates focused on sectarian issues often pitting the country's majority Hindus against minority Muslims. Only a small fraction of their coverage was dedicated to unemployment in a month when more than 13 million jobs were lost and India's jobs rate was the lowest in a month when the country was not in lockdown over the COVID-19 pandemic. It's hard to put a finger on why TV news channels have veered away from what would constitute as the news towards what would now be denounced as sensationalism by traditional journalism standards. Many accuse the politicians and TV channel heads of pressuring the editors into running shows that are polarizing. Many also think that TV channel bosses are simply pandering to the sentiments of the majority Hindus, many of whom support the ruling BJP. Irrespective of the reasons, many like Gen C. Jacob are worried about eroding standards in Indian journalism. It's not our job to worry about whether the government likes us or not. It's our job to set standards uh, for our own reporting. But if we are not setting the standards, then we will not be immune to all kind of pulls and pressures that comes in from the management, that comes in from the government, that comes in from establishments or the authorities who, uh, you know, law enforcement who will try and foist cases on you. The general public too is fed up with what they call the news channel's divisive agenda. 77% of respondents polled in a survey after the controversy over the BJP spokesperson's comments said TV news should tone down the polarizing rhetoric. Anti-hate speech campaigner Shabnam Hashmi blames politicians just as much, if not more, for communal polarization. Her organization, Anhad, has been working to curb hate speech for the past two decades. We have date-wise documented from various parts of India. The problem, she says, has now become far too pervasive to be tackled by small civil society groups. It's a question of scale in terms of our reach or human resources or funding. We have used music, theater, very uh, interactive uh, sessions, lectures. So all that worked with the people with whom we worked. 
But since TV news reaches millions, far more than activists often do, Shabnam believes it should be more effectively regulated. There are existing rules specifically prohibiting channels from using inflammatory language. But they can sometimes be too vague to enforce efficiently. One of the provisions of the program code says that the cable television networks cannot air or broadcast content which is not in good taste and decency. Now who determines what is good taste or decency? Ideally speaking, it should be the court of law. New rules that mandate stricter restrictions on what can be broadcast are pending clearance from the Indian Supreme Court. Some may argue that freedom of expression is critical for a democracy to function effectively. But in India, the world's biggest democracy, legal experts believe rules can still allow for free speech while regulating against offensive content on TV. But until that comes into effect and media houses improve editorial standards, concerns are that a lot of polarizing material will continue to be broadcast, further damaging India's social fabric. Ishan Garg, CNA, New Delhi.